Hi, this is Fernando Gomez Sancha. I am presenting this video of a green light enucleation of the prostate. Many people um, have heard about this procedure, but uh, there are very few videos of it, and I would like to demonstrate uh, today the steps of this procedure, and uh, I think I you will enjoy uh, the whole thing. This is um, the urethra. We were introducing the cystoscope and we are approaching the sphincter. I always like to keep a very good eye at the sphincter and and to understand the anatomical uh, relationships of the sphincter and the veromontanum in each individual patient because it's very important to plan the, the operation and to um, to allow for a successful recovery of the patient without uh, risk of incontinence or with very limited risk of incontinence. Uh, I'm checking now the bladder. This is the uh, urethral orifice in the left side of the patient and this is the uh, right side. This patient was catheterized and you can see the edema and inflammation in the bladder wall uh, due to the presence of a plastic uh, catheter inside the bladder for, for some weeks. So for this procedure I'm going to use the 2090 fiber. This is not the Moxie fiber. I'm using the XPS machine, the 180 watt uh, laser, but I'm using the old fiber because it's more suitable for enucleation. The first uh, step of the procedure is going to be to make a an incision at the apex that will try to separate the apical part of the adenoma from the sphincter. So I am circumcising the vero and I will look for the mm, for the sphincter very carefully to know exactly where is the uh, lower part of the adenoma uh, very very close to the sphincter and it's important to, to find this spot because you want to separate the sphincter from the tip of the adenoma, from the apex of the adenoma and if you are shy and you're very afraid and you go far away from the sphincter when you do your enucleation maneuvers um, the mucosa will break uh, following the plane so of the adenoma so it's important to determine the exact uh, limit of the sphincter and to make a 360 degree circumferential incision at the apex to try and separate uh, the apex of the adenoma from the sphincter. And you see that I'm getting close to the sphincter. I, I'm doing these incisions and I'm communicating, let's say, the lower part with the upper part. This uh, part of the operation sometimes can be a little bit bloody because uh, there are many mucosal vessels that can bleed and then they become a little bit uh, difficult to control. So, <coughs> but when I have trouble with bleeding, this is not a truly a uh, dangerous situation now, it's, it's just we have some small bleeders. Um, when, when I get uh, problems with uh, visibility and irrigation, I go uh, right away to look for the capsule. And this is what we're doing on the right side of the Veromontanum. It's a it's very easy to find this plane um, laterally to the Vero and you can see that the tip of the uh, laser cystoscope will aid in the dissection throughout the procedure. This is not uh, similar to homium laser enucleation in the sense that we are going to try to do a, an end block enucleation of the adenoma. So it's just one piece of adenoma going into the bladder for morselation. And also because it's not a cutting uh, dissection, but a mechanical dissection. Here I'm adjusting the focus to be able to, to see the characteristics of the capsule a little bit better. And you can see that over the Veromontanum we have localized the capsule. And now I'm pushing with the tip of the cystoscope very gently to dissect the capsule from the adenoma progressively. You see that it's important to keep in the, in the, in the plane 
one of the advantages of this uh, kind of a nucleation is that we can see very well uh, where the capsule is and we can see it's a pinky and recognizable um, a structure uh, and it's not damaged by the uh, laser energy as it happens with tulium nucleation, holmium nucleation, where it is the energy uh, or the mechanical effect of the holmium pulses what is going to dissect the adenoma from the capsule and here it is the mechanical uh, pressure exerted by the cystoscope what uh, will uh, separate the adenoma from the capsule. So here you see we can see the plane very nicely and we can see how by pushing very gently we can dissect the uh, adenoma from the capsule. Here I am using only 40 watts of energy for coagulation so that's almost all the energy the capsule is going to receive just 40 watts for coagulation which is going to cause very little and very superficial coagulation uh, which will uh, make this procedure very tolerable for patients there will be no uh, significant dysuria after this procedure because we use very low uh, power you see this is 40 watts and you can see that uh, there's a blinking uh, beam and the blinking beam uh, is uh, because coagulation in the XPS system is pulsatile I, uh, despite we use the old fiber, the 2090 fiber and not the MOXIE fiber. You see that I, uh, another reason for using this fiber is that sometimes the tip of the fiber is, is a good tool to aid in the identification of the capsule plane and many times um, uh, this, this uh, fiber uh, is more robust than the moxie fiber which can break if you exert mechanical pressure on the tip. So <coughs> as you see I am progressing bilaterally uh, I go from one side to the other side trying to keep in the plane. It's very important to move laterally you don't want to go deep in one spot uh, you want to move from side to side and, and keep dissecting the adenoma from the capsule because this way it's very difficult to lose your plane, you know, uh, to lose the, the proper plane. Uh, here you can see we alternate mechanical uh, pressure, mechanical efforts to separate the adenoma from the capsule with coagulation uh, from the laser fiber. Of course, when we separate the adenoma from the capsule, there is uh, bleeding, there is some bleeding, and as it happens now, and uh, so progressively you have to control the bleeding to have a good visibility and um, to avoid uh, a significant blood loss. No, usually there's not uh, a big blood loss in this in this procedure and uh, as you will progressively see the visibility is amazingly good throughout uh, the procedure if you are careful enough to um, do your hemostasis as you progress. Um, the other setting I use for vaporization is 80 watts. Uh, you see that with, uh, with, the, with the laser in 40 watts for coagulation and 80 watts for vaporization I have a range of uh, possibilities. I can just coagulate, I can cut tissue at uh, higher powers and depending on the, uh, the way I manipulate the fiber, you know, slower rotation or faster rotation, closer to the tissue or further away from the tissue, I can get an array of uh, different tissue effects that allow me to uh, coagulate and cut uh, fibrous attachments of the adenoma to the capsule without uh, a lot of uh, energy dispersal or energy damage of the capsule. Here you see we are progressing and we are approaching the, the bladder neck area. So <coughs> here again I'm trying to adjust the focus so I can, I can see uh, the capsule better. You see it's important to keep doing hemostasis throughout the procedure 
because in my experience the more the more time you spend uh, doing hemostasis the less trouble you have at the end of the procedure when you have to do your morselation so here we are there is a mm, disagreement I think in the planes that's capsule uh, for sure but I went a little bit deeper uh, and now I'm trying to join these two planes mm, in my experience this procedure is, is it's quite safe as long as you don't do uh, excessive pressure or as long as you don't want to rush it too much I think uh, progressive hemostasis is important to keep a good uh, visibility throughout the procedure so here for some reason my camera got moved and um, I'm trying to set it again okay so you see we continue detaching the, the adenoma if you find a difficult uh, place where you cannot progress you can go somewhere else and continue detaching uh, the prostate where you find it easy and then when you come back to the difficult spots suddenly it will have become a little bit more affordable also there are some fibrous attachments uh, that you will have to cut with the uh, 80 watt uh, power setting to be able to continue detaching the adenoma from the capsule sometimes the fibrous attachments that are not easy to to release just with the uh, exerting pressure with the with the cystoscope okay so and sometimes as you see the tip of the fiber is very useful to to find the right plane and to help in the progressive dissection this is not a an operation that can be rushed you need to be patient and slowly detach the adenoma and I have to say that with experience we have been able to cut the enucleation uh, times significantly and we can do enucleation of relatively large glands in a very limited amount of time there you go you see it's important to keep the hemostasis it's important to try to follow the plane here like the other side we were having a little bit difficulty on finding you know that's the correct plane we are in the correct plane but sometimes communicating the upper part with the lower part might need some cutting and some vaporization energy whenever there is a bleeder uh, you see there's maybe usually one bleeder uh, going mm, whenever there is a bleeder one has to control it um, and of course I use low power uh, 80 watts and, and 40 watts because you wouldn't want to to fire against a two or three millimeter thick uh, capsule for example anteriorly the capsule is very thin you wouldn't want to fire at full power uh, 180 watts uh, on, a, on, on the capsule because that that would carry a risk of perforation but at low power and as you see rotating the fiber as I do uh, it is uh, less likely to, to cause any perforation and if you're careful with your dissection um, as I said this can be extremely uh, safe to perform always uh, watching enucleation videos of any kind is a little bit confusing because one has difficulty orienting himself and gets lost for example now we are dissecting the right uh, prostatic lobe of the patient so what we have on the left of the image is the capsule I'm doing hemostasis against the capsule and what we have on the right of the image is the adenoma as you see we are moving from lateral to anterior that's the lateral wall of the capsule and I'm trying to um, approach the bladder neck uh, in the anterior part because here is where the uh, entrance in the bladder happens huh? you don't have to force it at all but if you follow the enucleation plane you will come in the bladder uh, around the uh, adenoma you see the adenoma is on our right, right side there is a little hole in the bladder neck and now what I'm doing with the fiber using the 80 watt energy is opening up this uh, let's say lateral uh, incision I'm opening it up with 80 watts because uh, I want to get 
uh, all the way down to the bladder neck fibers in this side. I'd like to check the urethral orifice and see where it is. There it is. Okay, so you see what, what is in the right side now is the adenoma and the median lobe. And I tried to do these uh, bladder neck incisions to be able to get under the middle lobe when we do the, the enucleation. Okay, so that's middle lobe. And also we can progress anteriorly. So mm, sometimes uh, this anterior dissection is easier and you don't use a lot of uh, energy to, to cut it. Just do a little bit of uh, uh, pressure and uh, it goes uh, through the normal plane. But some other times you have to do some cutting. We are very close to the capsule anteriorly. So you can see I'm firing tangentially to separate the adenoma from the capsule anteriorly. Uh, there we go. That's that's uh, constantly, I think, in the midline you have to cut the bladder neck, which is a, a separate uh, anatomical entity from the adenoma. I I didn't realize this until I started doing enucleations. You can you can um, you can see very clearly that the adenoma uh, and the bladder neck are separate structures. Okay, so <coughs> I would progress on this side as much as I can, but uh, of course we can go around it. This is hemostasis. You see, I can use 80 watts and rotate the fiber very fast to uh, achieve good hemostasis, uh, and it's important to spend the time in doing hemostasis. Here we go to the other uh, side. We go to the other side. Always stopping for hemostasis is not a problem. It's usually what you have to do uh, to stop for hemostasis. Okay. So here we are entering the opposite uh, side. So now the capsule would be in the right side of the image and the, the prostate would be on the left. The adenoma would be on the left. And I am trying to get up uh, anteriorly and see if I can uh, find uh, the bladder neck as we did on the other side. So you see this is all prostatic capsule. I am progressing uh, little by little, little by little, pushing, pushing, pushing the adenoma. And I guess at some stage we will pop into the bladder again. Mm on the other side, you see. So I always try to uh, break into the bladder um, at uh, 2 and um, 10 o'clock in the bladder neck, because if you try to get to the bladder neck pushing lower, you would risk uh, going into... And, and here we are. You see, this is already uh, bladder neck. As I said, on the right side it's a capsule, on the left side is the adenoma, and I think this is now joint with uh, with the, the other side. So what we are doing, if you can uh, imagine this, we are progressively separating the adenoma from the capsule. Now the adenoma is uh, starting to be more free uh, from the capsular attachments, but is still inside the prostatic fossa. Here again, I want to see the the uod in the other side. You see, that's the UO. We are in the bladder neck. So <coughs> I'll have to cut the bladder neck uh, a little bit because we want to get uh, uh, underneath the, uh, the middle lobe, as we were uh, commenting before. Most people thought that green light could not be used for enucleation because uh, most people thought automatically that enucleation can only be done with a a straight firing fiber, but the truth is that when we get uh, to the bladder neck, you know, if we had a straight firing fiber, green light could probably hit the bladder. But as we use a lateral uh, firing uh, fiber, side firing fiber, there's uh, no risk of uh, of damaging the bladder, and we can cut the the, the bladder neck very easily without risking um, uh, damaging the, the bladder at all. So here you see we're getting under in one side, we have the bladder neck and we can continue cutting it 
you see we go under the adenoma again towards the other side and we'll get out to the bladder neck again there we are I'm looking for it here so I don't like to cut the attachments at 6 o'clock right away because uh, in my experience it fixes the prostate in the midline and it allows me to try to go to the anterior part you remember we did an incision to separate the adenoma from the sphincter but many times this incision is not complete and thus you have to you have to go you have to go uh, anteriorly that's a capsule anteriorly that's a I guess adenoma okay and Ah, the adenoma, what has happened is that I have pushed uh, the adenoma and it's already flipping into the into the prostate. I, I try to do this kind of maneuver um, to try to see how much tissue is uh, fixing the adenoma to the sphincter area. You see, there is some apical attachment and this is a critical part of the operation because we don't want to damage the sphincter. So here what I'm doing is um, trying to cut this anterior mm, attachments, anteroapical attachments to the to the sphincteric area and of course I'm pushing the adenoma to make the cut as far away as possible from the sphincter. Um, if the initial incision is a little bit deeper um, usually this step is very simple and it doesn't um, almost sometimes it is not necessary. You can go with your cystoscope around the apex of the adenoma and uh, there's nothing joining it to the anterior uh, capsule or to the sphincter area but if the incisions are not deep enough then sometimes you can have this kind of situation where the apex is still attached to the sphincteric area. So you have to be careful not to hit the sphincter and to follow the, the incisions you m made at the beginning uh, to use them as a reference to avoid uh, any damage to the to the sphincter and you can see that now the prostate is almost completely released uh, anteriorly and if we push if we push the the adenoma you see it will rotate it will rotate and it will uh, go inside the bladder uh, you see now the adenoma is flipping uh, into the bladder we have uh, this adenomere which is uh, going to make it a little bit tricky to to detach it from the bladder neck area that's bladder neck at seven o'clock and this is uh, this uh, small adenomere and this is bladder neck on the other side so we will have to um, to try to dissect it again from the capsule uh, carefully and very smoothly and here I'm lifting it with the tip of the resectoscope to be able to cut the attachments to the capsule. And uh, if I wanted to, to summarize the, the advantages of green light for enucleation, I think one of them is the, the fantastic hemostasis. Secondly, I think the amount of power or energy we use is very minimal. We typically do this uh, 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 enucleations using 50 or 60,000 joules of energy which causes limited uh, damage to the to the capsule. You see that here I'm cutting under the middle lobe at 6 o'clock trying to join the two um, the, the bladder neck in both sides and now the adenoma is already in the bladder. Okay so as I was saying the advantages were the good hemostasis, the low energy uh, application with the minimal damage to the to the capsule and I think uh, it's it's very anatomical it uh, it is a joy to perform for the surgeon uh, much more interesting than um, vaporization which can become a little bit um, a little bit um, boring after some time or in, 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 in large prostates especially and here you see how the side firing fiber uh, carries very little danger for the for the bladder. Here we are close, I guess, to the or orietal orifice. I'm trying to check where it is. Okay, so there's no danger 
in cutting the remaining attachment at 6 o'clock of the adenoma to the capsule. There you go. You see now the whole adenoma is inside the bladder. Visibility usually worsens a little bit because uh, and now I am doing hemostasis of the uh, fossa, of the prostatic fossa. After a good hemostasis, uh, visibility should be nearly perfect and this also is an advantage for morcellation. Morcellation is a procedure by which the adenoma is fragmented into smaller pieces and uh, sucked out of the bladder and it needs uh, very good visibility because basically what you're doing is introducing a machine in the in the mechanical device in the prostatic fossa there you go that's the sphincter mm, it is uh, very nicely preserved and here I am doing uh, further hemostasis to get a good visibility see there are small mm, small pieces of tissue hanging which are of no consequence I think and if there is any part of the tissue that is bumping it's uh, protruding into the fossa or if we left a piece of adenoma the nice thing the other nice thing of the green light is that you can uh, use vaporization to complete the procedure you see the fossa is immense we went all the way down to the capsule and this will guarantee that uh, the adenoma will not grow back so we check the UOs again, that's trigone, that's bladder neck. Um, you can cut the bladder neck if you want uh, to open it up even further or you can leave it if you want. I really don't know if this has any influence in the development of bladder neck stenosis. Um, there we go, some hemostasis at the bladder neck area. It's important to ensure that the hemostasis is perfect before we introduce the uh, morcellator device because you want uh, to have uh, almost perfect visibility again that's the UO and that's uh, the bladder neck you see it's a, a separate anatomical entity from the I don't know it's a very interesting way to see the anatomy of the prostate okay so we're completing this and later on we will change the instrument we need a nephroscope to be able to introduce the morcellator blade because the fiber is flexible and it's compatible with a straight telescope but the morcellator is uh, much thicker than the fiber and we need to use uh, to change the instrument so we will try to make this change as fast as possible here in the bladder there's very good visibility you can see the adenoma in one piece it is an N block enucleation of the adenoma. We haven't done incisions. Uh, when I started doing enucleation, I did incisions uh, trying to trying to mirror the homium laser enucleation of the prostate procedure. But uh, gradually, I understood that uh, making incisions with the green light fiber is, is more difficult. It's not such a good cutting uh, when the fiber is embedded between you know inside an incision it degrades very fast so um, that's why I chose to have um, a different technique where we take the adenoma in one piece without having to do five and seven uh, o'clock incisions so now I'm changing the instrument as you see we have introduced the uh, nephroscope and now we will put the morcellator uh, blade inside the bladder you see good visibility is paramount especially to avoid lesioning the bladder you see that's the morcellator uh, rotating uh, blade this is the piranha system so what you have to do is to suck the tissue and then lift up the the blade to separate it from the bladder and this way uh, you will suck the adenoma and cut it in cut it in little pieces that will be extracted so this is a way to use green light that ensures a complete uh, removal of the adenoma that allows to retrieve tissue for analysis for histology which is another uh, interesting uh, possibility in certain patients and um, 
it is a relatively fast way of treating larger glands that would take longer to, to vaporize, even with the moxie fiber and um, the 180 watt laser vaporizing very large adenomas takes time and energy and sometimes a second fiber although soon the fibers will allow for much more energy output which will simplify the the, the situation but uh, in my view it's very nice to be able to have a laser that allows for very efficient vaporization like the uh, 180 watt XPS green light laser and also enucleation of the whole adenoma sometimes partial enucleation of the middle lobe uh, you just have to know your anatomy and uh, uh, to be careful to, to make sure that these procedures are carried out without negative uh, consequences so I leave you with this uh, view of uh, uh, um, tissue morselation with the Piranha system, a very reliable and safe morselator device. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed the, the movie. Thank you very much for your uh, patience.